Okay, what's up everybody? Uh, this is my new device, calling it the Stratus, and it's a Eurorack CV and gate sequencer. Um, if you guys follow me elsewhere on like Instagram, you'll know that I've gotten into Eurorack in this last year. So one thing I really wanted was the sequencer, and I know there's plenty out there but I wanted to build my own the way that I would want it to function and this is the end result. So it's USB powered, uh, all wooden enclosure as usual, pretty narrow. Uh, the USB will also provide a MIDI clock that it will slave to automatically. So we have four channels, um, 32 steps on each page, and each channel can have four pages, essentially. So you can really use it to build up an entire song if you are patient enough with it. Going over some of the controls, we have these two guys are encoders, and they have push buttons. So here's your just start and stop of the sequence. And then also your speed. Speed can also be, you can also get a clock input here, which it'll slave to. Um, this guy is kind of your navigation control, so you go between each of the four pages and then if you press down it selects the different channels. You'll see the row highlight and then the LED over here will also be blinking. Kind of looks like all of them are blinking right now, but this one it's fairly obvious it's blinking more. Um, persistence of vision stuff, whatever. You can't really see any blinking lights in person, it's just the camera. Um, then to the right you have uh, gate outputs, which will be your first column, and your second column is CV out. And the CV goes from 0 to a rough almost 5 volts, so you can get quite the range if you're using it for uh, pitch, and you could also use it to modulate anything uh, that accepts CV. These buttons to the right with the amber type LEDs on them are your mutes. Um, the ones that are completely blank um, are the channels you're not on. And if you mute the channel you're on, it just has a really quick flash rather than the slower one. Um, you can set the length of each channel by a long pressing and then using the encoder. So each channel can have a, you know, 1 to 32, whatever step you want on it. And that persists across all the different pages of the sequence. To clear out everything, just long press on the start-stop. 
You can clear out an individual page by pressing and holding the mute button for three seconds. Again, you'll get all the lights will turn on that indicates that page has been cleared. And there's also this button up here, which is kind of like the menu, if you want to call it that. The menu, um, what you can do is copy and paste your pages to any other page in any other channel. So this guy right here is copy. This is paste. Um, these are the speed divisions of the master clock. So, you know, if you have this speed way up, these are all going at the full speed, but you can turn these down. So it's one, two, three, four. These are all multiplications. All right, I suppose divisions of the master clock. So you can all having, have them going at different rates, half speed. Um, yeah, however you want to configure that. And then that coupled with the independent lengths of each channel, you can get some really uh, interesting sequences. Then this last row, if these are on, that means it will be going in random. So let's go ahead and start one. That's really fast. So we can divide that down. And then we can also turn on random. And you see it hopping around to different steps. So let's turn random off. So this knob right here, is your actual CV output. Okay, so let's just go ahead and patch something up. I'm gonna start by just clearing this. Oh, another function of the menu, forgot to mention, is this button down here, which will save. So whatever state it's in, if you hit this, it'll save. If there's no loading, it just saves the last state when you start it up. So if you had something crazy patched in, you can save that, and then next day, turn it all on. If everything's still connected, you should be able to just run it again. So, <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and patch in, we're going to use the trigger to our first channel here. This is going into plats. Um, then I am going to use the CV out on the first channel. This is going through a quantizer right now and then going into the plats uh, vault per octave. So let's go ahead and put in a random sequence to do that. <clears throat> Just press, press whatever steps you want and as it's held down the gate is open and you can uh, change the frequency so I'm just gonna put in some random My quantizer right now is, um, the glide is on, so if I turn that off, you can kind of hear those notes quantizing a little better. <clears throat> so there's some super random notes. So let's see how that sounds. So, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, let's just move on to the next channel. So hit this guy, we're on channel two. And what are we gonna do with channel two? <clears throat> um, I'm just gonna use the CV on channel two. And I'm using that to modulate the timbre of plats. So instead of actually putting in gates, cause we're not even using them, you can also do this free recording thing where <clears throat> if the sequence is playing, you hold down the menu and hit this button, it'll start blinking, which indicates it's kind of just recording automation of the knob movement. So let's go ahead and start that. As you can see, this sequence is going a lot faster because we have it all the way up in the menu. So just go ahead and record some random modulation. Pretty crazy. <clears throat> Let's tune that down. So you can hear it modulating. Let's also put random on and maybe we'll speed it up. Cool. So let's move on to the third channel, which we're not using yet. <clears throat> and let's pass in to the gate. Um, this is going to the no coast. I'm just going to use it as a kick drum. So we'll just put in 
Yeah, so we have this. Let's speed, let's slow that down to half speed, just like the first sequences. And yeah, let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Also going to patch in some modulation out of the CV jack. Uh, this is going. I don't remember. Oh, I think this is going to the fall amount of our slope, which in turn is modulating some other stuff on no cast. But um, I'm going to turn this one way to the highest speed. And just see what I'm going to do. The same thing. Just free record some modulation. In. I forgot we were using that um, for the kick drum as well. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's mute. Yeah, I can't really make out that modulation too much. Yeah, a little bit. You can kind of tell that that modulation's envelope is changing. Again, this is going to the decay time of the slope. But let's just move on to our last channel. We're just going to patch in Kimmy's Tycho here. And I just have some like hi-hat type sounds on this. So I have the gate, and then I'm also going to modulate the uh, release amount. And I'm just going to put in a whole bunch of just random and then whatever is this one is on full speed so that's cool so so that's way too much release on that let's move that everything else so let's bring that way down Cool. So, if, and then also, if we wanted to, we can. If we don't want that to be so repetitive, we could put in an odd number of steps. We could also put on random if we wanted. But let's go ahead and bring in our other stuff. just one page um, that's just our first page so if we go to page two there's nothing even we have you know a whole lot more we could sequence potentially so this this is why I added the copy and paste because say you wanted to just you know build out your song you don't want the drums to change on every uh, page change so what you can do say I want these hi-hats on the next page just hop into here copy I'll go to page two and then I'll go paste. So now we just have hi hats. We go back to page one. So, and you know, again, up to four pages of that. So you can copy from one channel to the next, any page. It's pretty convenient. Um, yeah, I guess the only other thing I didn't go over is there's a CV input for changing the pages as well. So let me see if I have a cable here that's long enough. So I'm just going to hook up an LFO into the pages. Uh, let's see, we have like a triangle here. Yep, 
Didn't get that in all the way. You can see it changing pages automatically with the LFO, which is a pretty slow LFO, but I tend to not use that so much, but I did add it as an option. If you want to get super random, you can patch in a CV into that and just let your sequence kind of go all over the place, especially with the randomization on every individual channel as well. So that is pretty much it. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it, oh, I should mention when you are, when you have a gate patched in or a clock patched in, or if you're slaving to a MIDI clock, the divisions, so these guys, they will only divide, I don't do uh, multiplication on that. So whatever the fastest clock will be up here, and then you can just divide what it is. So it's best to just patch, patch in a pretty quick MIDI clock or CV and then just divide as you need. But if you are using the internal, it will, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter if it's multiplication or dividing when you're using the internal because you can just adjust the overall tempo that way. But that is it. Um, yeah, I found this to be super, super useful on my Eurorack journey. Um, again, there's a lot out there that you could get but this is the one that I wanted, so I made it. And I have four of these available, as usual. I usually only make five of these things. One of them is for me, and the other uh, four are for sale. So I'm selling them for 300 Again, it's, you know, that's kind of my go-to price for all this stuff. I'm not making money on any of these things. I'm just doing them for fun, so, you know, I, I actually don't even calculate the price of these things um, as far as uh, all the components needed and whatnot, and, you know, <laughs> the amount of time it takes to build these cases and stuff is pretty substantial, so, yeah, I might in the future make some cheaper acrylic versions of these, possibly, but I already have another project I want to start up on right now. I tend to get bored with things pretty quickly. But for now, this is what I got. If you're into Eurorack stuff and you would find this useful, um, you can pick one up. But they will probably go fast. A lot of my stuff sells out really, really quick. So, you know, grab it quickly if you want it, because there's a pretty good chance I won't make more of them because I have not yet done that for any of my previous projects. I just, I usually put out the uh, code and whatnot after a little while. Um, so if you're inclined to build one, you might be able to. But anyway, rambling on, that's it. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks. That was a shitty clap.